Education, education, this is the foundation. Our rising population needs sound education to be recognized anywhere you go. Have your certificate to show to enjoy any kind of happiness. Knowledge is the key to success. Hi everyone. Good evening, good evening everyone and welcome back to Soka TV, the new home of culture. Guys, this evening we have a very spectacular show planned for you and we hope that you are interested to stay through to the end. It will be very informative and of course our topic is always dance. Today, dance education. Dancing is so much more than just grooving on a dance floor to your favorite music. You'll be surprised how many benefits are associated with dance. And of course, we have the guests, the panelists here tonight, and they will tell you all about dance education and what it can do for you. All right. So first up, we have a lady who has been dancing, I mean, a pretty long time. She has been a member of the Batai Dance Company, as well as the Barrett Harrier Community Council. You would have seen her face um, in many school competitions always putting her best foot forward, always encouraging her students to perform at their best, whether it be practical or theoretical. I want to invite on our screen today, Miss Rock, sorry, Mrs. Roxanne de Souza Phillips. Phillips, you have to tell. Hi, Roxanne Phillips. Good night, good night, it's Philip. Philip, Philip, Philip. No Phillips. S, no S. Yes, yes. Good night, good night. The S on everything, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Mindy, I don't know where, what's that Batai group that I've been performing that with. That was with Man. That's good with Man. Oh, now. okay, you know, okay. Batai Dance Company. Wow. <laughs> Way back. <laughs> Way back. <laughs> Way back. <laughs> Roxanne, could you give us a little, um, a little synopsis of yourself, Nana, a brief little synopsis, let our viewing audience know who you are and where you come from? Okay, well, my name is Roxanne. This is Philip. <laughs> um originally from belmont um Lion. yes and <laughs> the belmont crew yeah 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 um started dancing in school and then i was introduced to arthur johnson repertory dance workshop where i got a lot of my training i moved on to barataria community council from there, I stopped dancing for a while and went into church and was dancing in church, led a group in church. And before I went back into Best Village with Bombasa, then went on to Ebbery Dodo. I teach dance at Digo Martin Central Secondary. Um, I've been there since 2014. Nice, so lovely. Very interesting. Well, not to outdo you, will be a long-standing <laughs> member and dancer of the Asta Johnson Repertory Dance Theatre. She was also a former Teen Talent finalist, which was hosted by Miss Hazel Ward Redman. You remember her in the days, Teen Talent? <laughs> She's also my dance partner, my friend, and sometimes my advisor. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the e eclectic Miss Joanna Charles. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I don't want to say too much about you, Joanna, because I know you're going to tell me you're going to tell me in public exactly who and what do you do, who you are and what do you do. Okay, well, I am Joanna Charles, formerly Francis. Now back to Joanna Charles. I have been dancing for pardon? Entanglement. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> this entanglement I've been dancing for many, many years. Okay, I've been teaching for many, many years also. This will make it the 40th year that I'm in the teaching service. Whoa. I have done primary school and I went into secondary school in 2000. And so I'm on the verge of leaving the teaching fraternity for those young budding 
dance to, to follow. So, Joanna, what, what, um, you're leaving. Are you going to stay to help with the curriculum or something within dance education? Are you going to still hang around or are you going on a vacation in Hawaii? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to still hang around. I know my, my expertise may be needed in certain places, so I will still be around. You don't look a day older Fantastic. than 25. True. <laughs> Thank you so much, Gregor. So we have next, you all might know him as the one side of the twin, but I want you all to know that this uh, this new, this next guest is also um, very much an individual where his um, dance talent and his interest in dance is concerned. He is also a teacher now, and he has toured um extensively and represented trinidad and tobago's culture all over the world he has also performed for many companies he has choreographed for many many students and companies in trinidad and now he's also a teacher let us welcome ladies and gentlemen mr ian batiste hi mr batiste how are you doing hi. Well, hi, welcome I know you were on the show already, but still, for our viewing audience who may not have seen the previous program, could you just give us a little synopsis about yourself, what you're about? Okay. Uh, um, good evening, everyone, again. Uh, my name is Ian Batiste. I have been dancing from since Form 3. I can't remember what age that was. <laughs> that was so long ago. Um, from there, I started dancing in Best Village. Then I moved from, that was in Point Fortin because I'm from Point Fortin originally. I moved up to Port of Spain where I started dancing with Barataria for performers under Gregor Brady. And then also um, Malik for performers under Michael Lucien. I also perform with most of the companies, as Mindy said, um, Noble Douglas, Carol Chappelle, Philip Sargent. Andrew Lashaw, um, Alan Balfour, to name a few, Pastor Johnson as well. Yes, um, I have been teaching for, from since 2012. Okay, at table and secondary. Table and secondary, nice. We have a South in the in the in the mix. Eight years. Yeah. Wow, eight years, good. Well, actually, yeah, August will be eight years. Nice. Okay, nice, nice. Well, that's a fine record. But not to outdo you, <laughs> this next person was a great student of Trinidad Dance Theatre's theatre, which was led by the ever popular Mrs. and Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Eugene and Jessica Joseph. She's been a teacher for many years. Um, members of the viewing public, I would now like to introduce you to the amazing Miss Kelly Stewart Watty. Welcome, Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Good evening. Kelly, oh, we're not hearing you, Kelly. Have volume. Hold on. You hearing me now? Yes, yes, we're hearing you. How are you doing, Kelly? Welcome to Soka TV, uh, the greatest one in culture. <laughs> I'm doing well. Thanks, Gregor. Thanks for having me on. Can you tell the viewing public a little bit about yourself? Let them get to know you a little bit before we get into the meat of the matter today. Okay, well, as they said, my name is Kelly Stewart Watty. I currently teach at Holy Faith Convent in Coover. I teach dance, theater arts, and Cape performing arts. Um, my dancing and dance education history I started at Eugene Joseph Schneider Dance Theater and then pretty much stepped out of performing and into dance education. Since then, I, have, I am an alum of Imperial Society of Teachers of Dance, Royal Academy of Dance. Um, University of the West Indies and Pro Divida Dance Vision International, and that's it for me, really. You're a big. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, we have a very, very qualified um, group of panelists here this evening, nice. and our topic is about dance education or education in dance, whichever way you want to put it. And to start off, let us help our viewing public understand exactly what is dance in education. So, Miss Miss France. Not Miss Francis, you are a child. I want to ask you this first question. A lot of people think that um, dancing in a studio is very similar. It's probably the same thing as teaching dance in a school. You see, the school environment is different. And a lot of people think that it's very easy. 
the way that you teach in a studio, it can be transferred automatically to um, a, a classroom of students. Could you give our viewing public a better understanding of what dance education actually is? Okay, uh, so dance education is about a process in which students are exposed to the different elements of dance. And based on that, they develop their dance skills and their dance knowledge. So it's not just about a production, it's working through a process to get to a sitting point. It's more of a process rather than a product, is that what you're saying? Yes, rather than the product. So they, they, they focus is on the process rather than the product. If the product happens, yes, but the process is, is key. And what are some of the things that a dance, um, a dance course or um, a classroom um, details might entail? What are some so, of the things that you might find in a, a course? So we have, of course, the national curriculum that we work from, which is a guide as to how persons supposed to develop lessons per se to teach these students. In Inside of there, you will have the elements of dance. You will have choreographic devices. You will have movement principles. You will have nutrition, a whole gamut of things that, of course, will entail educating the students. Because again, dance is a study. So we have, we have created enough information for students to learn more about dance and of course its benefits as we say in um how the curriculum has divided it to students learn to dance they learn about dance appreciation and they also learn about dance making mm -hmm. so inclusive of all the um the, the approach to education this is how we approach it so oh, students uh, learn about dance they know about dance appreciation and of course they are aware of making dance. Well, Ms. Braffitt here, yeah, Ms. Colleen Braffitt, South Great Finest. She wants to know what is the difference between dance and education and dance education, if there is a difference at all. Anybody can answer. All right, so I can help with that, Colleen. Um, dance and education is different to dance education because dance and education encompasses all education spectrum rather than specifying just the dance as a subject. For example, within the PE syllabus at the secondary school level, there is a component called dance, but its objectives are quite different to the objectives outlined in dance as CXT or theater arts or dance as part of KEEP. So that is the difference between the two. Dance education speaks specifically to the process and product of dance and dance in education encompasses other subjects' involvement in the art. Well, okay. said, well defined. So Thank we're you. talking about dance education, and the whole idea of pedagogy does come up. So exactly then, could any one of you all explain to us or give us a better idea? What is pedagogy? Mm. I know it's a term that a lot of people try to shy away from, but what is pedagogy? <laughs> and then related to dance. <laughs> All right, I can um, handle the pedagogy for you again. Um, <laughs> dance, pedag <laughs> dance pedagogy, I was actually hoping Roxanne would do that. Roxanne? You go ahead, you start it. <laughs> All right, pedagogy and dance, as very eloquently outlined by my colleague earlier this afternoon, Dance pedagogy in, involves the sciencing of dance. What actually makes dance dance? For example, when we are discussing pedagogy for dance, we are discussing things like lesson plans. What are the core outcomes? What are the objectives of the lesson that we want the children to be able to hit? The, the um, what we say, tasks. Pardon me? Is that the domains that you're, you're speaking about? Well, I haven't come to the domains as yet. I'm just kind of giving the overview. What are the things that you would want to, to hit? If you go into the, into the planning or curriculum planning of it, you will start to talk about the domains and the attaching to, as Karen has eloquently put in, the Bloom's taxonomy and the levels of understanding 
But if we're talking about it in layman's terms, we're really just talking about the tasks and the basic objectives that we want to hit in every lesson. So it's really the planning of the sciencing for or the planning, the sciencing for the play or dance that you would see happening in a class. Okay, okay. Thanks very much for clearing that up. So um this is a question for any of the panelists. You could just all don't rush at one time, but you can answer it. I know everybody's capable of answering this. What are, the, what are the overarching goal or goals of dance education? What are some, or what if one? That would depend on the level that you are talking about. What education? Secondary or school. Secondary Let's school? go to secondary school because yes. most of you are yes. secondary yes. school teachers. Yes. Yes. I know yes. it will be unfair because some of the viewing public might be um primary school teachers and I want to know about your questions are coming up later on. That is with VAPA and so forth. But we'll deal with secondary because most of these big panelists are very... Mm -hmm. But we could probably narrow it down yeah. to identifying what are the benefits of studying dance in secondary schools then. Okay, so we have students being exposed to critical thinking, problem solving, um, teamwork, healthy, being healthy physically, um, cultural awareness, which is so important, especially to the dance content that we offer students at secondary school and primary school level, and introduction to aesthetics. So that's basically what we try to do with respect to dance in the schools. Okay. That's some of the main would, would you say then that that is different to what, um, what would occur in a, a studio where you just go to learn to, to dance? Well, I mean, learn dances. I know some people say they go to learn to dance and learn choreography. Wouldn't all those benefits come out in a studio as well or not? Uh, I must again emphasize that with respect to the studio, it's all production based. With respect to dance in the classroom, it is process based with production in mind. But Could the I, focus uh, is more on the process. Okay. I, I mean, uh, yes, from, Ian. Um, also, in the classroom, you get a bit of history, whereas in the studio, you may not. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, so, with the type of dance that you're doing. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. And I also want to point out, because some people may not realize, in a studio, um, you tend to have students who chose dance, who want to be there. But in a school setting, these are children who may or may not want to dance. They didn't choose it. And just like any other subject, you this is thrust upon you, right? And of course, the onus is on right. the teacher to encourage the students and all of that. So the, the, mm -hmm. the persons who are there and their intentions are also different, right? Um, Roxanne, could you give us an idea then, because of the student's intention, they may not want to dance, but if we want to encourage them, we can advise them on what type of careers that they could probably get into if they, if they choose dance as a subject or if they take dance seriously in school. Give us an idea of what are some of the career path, the career path that you might be able to take. Yeah, and this is very important because uh, when we teach dance, a lot of the children and even their parents think that if my child do dance in school, they will come, they will want to be a dancer and what a dancer have. But doing dance is more than just being a dancer. And there are a lot of careers that you can follow along the path. Some of them, we would list the ones that are closer to dance, which are dance therapy and um, being a choreographer, even a dance educator. But then you can go into marketing and advertising. You can go into technical theater, which you can go into the stage management, lighting, song. You can be a costume designer. You can be a makeup artist because all of these stem from le learning dance. When you learn dance, you learn movements. So if you're a costume designer and you're looking at a piece of choreography, you're able to advise the choreographer because of the movements and the flow of the movements, this type of material may work. Or the style that you, the fashion that you want to make it in, it may constrict the movement. So probably you may need to adjust here and adjust there. So being able to um, appreciate and have experience of dance in school, you're able to better apply yourself to these subject areas. You can go even into um, movement analysis. 
right? I know that's a very, a very big thing, movement analysis. You have to be able to analyze movements and not just go out there and dance, but what the, what the movement means, right? When you, when you go into that, you think more in depth of your choreography than just going from step to step. So these are just some of the, some of the multitude of careers that you can follow from studying that. Anybody want to add to that? Because we want to encourage young people to get into dance, you know. What about dance ethnography? Okay. Most important. Yes, because a lot we we are talking about dance, and the younger ones they don't research at all. So okay. we need to let them start to research. Okay. I remember. I'm glad you said that, Mister Batiz, because I remember. Um, Everybody wanted to be a nurse and a doctor. Nobody wanted to be the person taking all the x-rays and so on. My partner just showed up and said, I want to be the x-ray man. And he went in there and he still have a job and they hardly have those people nowadays. And it's very, very important to the hospitals because everybody just wants to be a nurse or a doctor. So it's good yeah. that you step in that dance ethnography because that's very, very important. Yeah, because in Trinidad right now, we, we have very few. Very few. Well, also, I think it's really important to know that dance links to several other types of employment, understanding movement, understanding creativity, understanding education as part of movement. All of those things are links to other, um, to other professions, dance therapy, dance. Um, they have people who do dance costuming as a, as a, um, as a job. Yeah. And when I say dance, I should say theater costuming. There are people who would be getting into production, lighting, set, sound, dance, or rather art provides a gateway to get into all of these things. So it's not specifically what I want to do in dance. It's how can dance really propel me further into whatever I want to do? Because even as simple as being comfortable in front of multiple people um, is a skill, is something that has to be yeah. nurtured. I always so bring up the point about um, being a, a lawyer being able to stand up in front of a, a jewelry and to deliver yeah. all of those things could come through the, the, the skill that competency of of performing in front of a crowd yes could be enhanced by dance as um in the <laughs> that we could go into entertainment law yes of course yeah. I, I i think we, we I think we're lacking we can, a lot of dancers in those areas yes eh? because yes. the dancers are always shy to get in the I, even, I, I really, I even really with it's sorry. not only sorry, shy, sorry, but some sorry. Them lack of knowledge. They don't realize the areas that they can really expand themselves yeah. into and, and just want to the persons who do dance critiquing. We have editors on the newspaper who have yeah, no yeah. ideas of how to critique a dance performance. So we need persons in that field. We are also looking at persons who do video, photography. Uh, Photography and videography also. When someone takes a picture of a dance and they forget their feet or they, they look at something else other than. So we need yeah. to also encourage persons yes. to be part of that scheme of things. So Barry, Mirage, I really hope that we answered your question and we have I some other <laughs> I, I we have some um we have some other um suggestions by our panelists sorry our viewing public who are also sending in some ideas of you know the areas that you can get into yeah, if you study dance Nikhil jones dance is course and coach just came up and that that is yes. really fun yes to look at but you know actually um i i know a friend of mine who did dance for a very long time and you know what he was he was training dance um swimmers how to do synchronized swimming he was the choreographer Lovely. for that. So you see, dancers can branch off in many things. Yes. It's not just about things that dealing with dance, actually. Correct. So I'm glad that you all are here today. Lovely panel. So we'll educate the nation that you don't have to just be a, foot, a professional dancer or a choreographer when you do yep. these dance education courses. There are other or, things in Or a dance teacher. Yeah. Oh, yes, dance yes, teacher. yes, a dance teacher. Yeah. Or the owner of a dance company. I mean, yes. we, think, we think that's obvious, but we didn't mention it. Like, I'm, I mean, if Shaquille Jones just says something like festival director. They have, yes. They have that opening right now for um for Tobago. For Tobago, okay. yeah. So there you go. You know, so, um, we have to put ourselves out there because you look at um, NCC, National Carnival 
commission doesn't have a, um, a area for dance on the commission. Nobody's representing dance there. We have Pan, we have Calypso, we have Mass Meeting, all these Mass, but we don't have dance, and that's what we need to get in there because dance well, are very integral part of the social well, and cultural. Uh -huh. Gregor, if I might, um, that is something that is actually very near and dear to my heart. Yes, we do not have representation on these councils or committees, all of these policy making bodies, but the, the reason is, is not difficult to figure out. Really, when we train our dancers, most of us, what do we tell them? Do we guide them towards dance in education? Do we guide them towards anything outside of movement as part of their training? Because by the time we get them in secondary school, most of their exposure to dance really is just dancing. You understand? So as an educator myself, I have had to put um, a lot of emphasis on identifying not just to the children but to their parents the different avenues the dance can take them and more often than not i have had to chart the course for where they want to be for the parent to deem it as viable so maybe maybe that problem not having movement representation in places of importance is something that we as part of the dance community need to look at ourselves to figure out why it's not happening besides dancing are we getting the tools that they want us to are we getting information on policy development and design are we getting information on health and wellness relationships are we getting information on education not just dancing very nice okay. gilly was well informed <laughs> you're bright <laughs> Well, um, but then all other side, what effect does um, dance has on our society and how would you enable your students to understand such? What effect do you think dance has right now on the society? Um, let me put away, you think we, 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 we want to dismiss the post-COVID thing and forget that COVID is here and just society in, with, out of the COVID world? So what effect you all think dance have on the so, society? Has so maybe we society. could go back to some of the experiences we would have had when we first joined the teaching fraternity with respect to being a dance, as, as teacher of the subject dance. Yes, and yeah. there were a few misconceptions. Um, persons, I had a parent calling the school frantically to tell them that she doesn't want her son dancing because she thought it would have just been a wind down. So people had no idea of dance education or dance in education as the case may be. And um, they needed to be informed that way. As dance teachers in the school, we have to advocate for the subject. And one of the ways in doing so is, of course, our content material that we deliver, our presence in the various dance shows that they may have so that parents can see the benefits of the dance and also through reading their children's work or being involved in a research project and all of that, they will see that dance is not just, as most people will think, a wine. So Adding to, add yeah. to, add to what Joanna said and what Lucy is saying, Ms. Regis, um, we could also integrate dance in other subjects or we could use dance in other subjects. But before we come to this dance integration, I want to just okay. dwell a little more into the perception that people have of dance as a subject, subject. in school. I mean, all of us would have had some sort of experience in our own, um, among our staff, um, with yeah. the ministry, parents, even the students themselves. Could you all give us a little idea of your own experience? I know Joanna said that a parent didn't want their student, but any of y'all had any other experience that could um, could give us an idea of how people really perceive dance? In terms of, of uh, yes, in terms of sometimes, in terms of um, religion, they, they tend to um, want to shy away and say, well, they can't dance because of their religion. That the students? Yes. Okay. Well, the parents would tell them that and, well, they would, Really, well, that is true, but again, 
I think we need to recognize what is um, the role of dance in, in education. Dance in education is not elective. Dance in education, or dance rather, education is not elective. It's one of the core subjects from forms one to three. three. And three. I have, it's compulsory. I have taken yes. my time with parents when they came. It didn't matter what they came with. So I will use Ian's argument. When they told me it's religion, I asked them if they believe in the Big Bang Theory or if they believe that the earth was created. And if they believe that the earth was created and the child is allowed to study science, well, then you need to take a seat because you either believe it or you don't. Or you don't. Uh, yeah? yeah? So, and if, if the child still insists, well, well, I wouldn't say the child because these are conversations that I have with the parent. If the parent still insists that they would not want their child to do dance, that is not a problem with me, but they must understand that there is no other way to get the mark. Your child's mark will be zero. There is no theory paper that is going to take up um, all the practicum or anything. If you, if you choose not to do it, that's not a problem. Also, your mark has to be zero. We also have to look at not only the parents, but the teachers that we have to take the challenge within schools because um, I have had the experience of going into the school and, and the teachers not appreciating dance. Dance is a waste of time, but the children doing it in the dance class, you have, um, they could be doing a better subject or they only run into the dance room to get away from a subject area instead of going to that. And they're not understanding what the children are grasping from the dance and the dance room. Because the dance room in a school is like a sacred place for the children. And, and until the entire school population understands that because when issues arise the children run to the dance teachers they run to the dance room that's the escape they go there you will get them i will have children they just walk in my room watch me and they go and they sit down in a corner don't ask them nothing don't tell them nothing they sit down then people come to look for them the day i watch them they watch me no it's like i haven't seen them good and they just want that space to work out whatever is happening, whatever issue has happened. I mean, we know how things are. Not all children have it have it easy. They have the good life. A lot of children are having a lot of struggles, a lot of issues. The the crime rates that they have to deal with. A lot of children, they, they when you come to school in the morning, you don't know if they had breakfast. You don't know um, if they slept good the night, what, what, what issues they had, bandits run through the house, or they had shoot up down the road, and you have to deal with these children. And when they come into the dance room now, you, you can take that and create something out of it. I have had a child who um, was being abused, and she didn't want dance. She didn't like dance in the beginning, but having one to three, you have to do it. You choose it in form two and three. So you come into the room and she was able to express and I would sit and I would talk to her and I would say, take all what you're feeling and start to put it into a movement. I said, don't oh, think about dance. Think about movement. What are you feeling? Where is the pain coming from? And she was able to start to express herself beyond and now loves dance, loves dance, loves the dance room. And this is what we have to understand. That's escape for children. So is it that That's not only the subject dance, but the dance room? Also provides, yes, that space. Is, so yeah, yes. I think other teachers, I don't know if it's jealousy, but um, a lot <laughs> of students always come and they always congregate in the dance room. Like there's something that draws them to that space. So then other teachers should open up, you know, a little bit, open up their minds a little bit to see what, why are the children going there? What draws but, them today? But even the dance teachers again, they're not sorry, not the dance teachers, the teachers of the school will also discourage the students from, for example, if they have to do dance and form for theater arts, they will discourage them from, for cho from yep. choosing the subject because they are thinking, you need to do science, you're too bright in so go that way of doing theater arts. I also remember a teacher of mine, when we were changing over the school to single gender, the ministry had this initiative a few years ago and our school was going into an all boys um, situation. And the teacher said, oh, Joanna, what you go do, girl? What happening here? How you teach these boys dance? And I'm like, if you understand that dance is a course of study, just like any other subject, you will understand that these young men will also learn to dance and not, as you may have it in your head, turn out to be something else other than who they were born to be. 
So his, his fear was that because now I am dealing with boys alone, that they will all turn on the other side. So Good that was like his fear. <clears throat> What well, about no, the homosexual? Father? Okay. What, what about your principles in terms of their perception? Um, again, I think it's the experience. I, I think is the, the, the teacher's um, passion for the subject and how well they sell the subject. So yes. principles are not principles will roll over if you show them that here's what I'm aware of what I'm doing and I know what I'm about. And this is how it's going to be. You need to put down your foot, especially when it comes to administration. But administration. If I could weigh in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Joanna, go ahead. When you're finished, I will um, weigh in. Um. Okay. No, I, I was just saying. At, in, in my instance, in in my in my instance, the administration has bought into the whole idea of dance in the school, so they give me what I want. Because again, you have to show them. Yeah, you really have to show them that here's what you are serious what you're about doing. What you're doing. Yeah. You know what you're doing. Um, the, and as Roxanne said, they will find students telling them, "Oh, I love to go to the dance room." Uh, and why? When they ask the students, because Miss allows me to be. I can express myself. You have students who have not been exposed to the subject in form one, two, and three. And then they ask the question, why? Why weren't we expo exposed to dance just like this other class was? So with all that buzz in the school, administration is aware that the subject is a subject and it need, and it has its rightful place on the timetable. But the Kelly, teacher has a lot, the teacher has a, sorry, before Kelly starts, the teacher has a lot to do with that also. Um, we have to show I mean, some people would say that it's another subject, but I'm not sure, but we have to show our words. We are the newest subject area in the entire school curriculum. So we have to prove our worth. And when you go there and you work and they see there's development in the children, these children, they didn't used to behave like that before. Or when they go in the dance room, it's a different type of child are dealing with. And then they start to settle and work differently. Then you start to prove Yes, something is really happening. But if you just go in there and you say, well, if they send them, they send them, and if they come, they come, then the, the principal and the admin wouldn't really appreciate what your subject area is. So you really have to show in the beginning, show it, and then put on your foot. This is what we are. This is what we are doing. This is, this is what we offer. This is the benefit. I have had a teacher pass my room, the um, HSB teacher, and I was doing joints and the connection and, and and he walked back and he was like mrs dance you teach and yes but i just teach at the hsb it's okay we do the same thing we are connected to a lot of subjects yes we, we are, help we, with are. Science, we help with math we help with language we help with literature oh, yeah and and if they look language. at it we are the higher subject we are the higher subject well we, we know, know for sure we know, we know, we know for sure adults. We yes. are involved in history for sure. You have to know the history. Yes. Yeah. Right. What yeah, what came come out from? Can but actually, just one point. Actually, yeah, yeah. um, so the other day, one of my um teachers, he teaches social studies and history. He wanted to do something with any dance aspect, but he can't dance. So he did the history part, and I did the, the um, performative part. So um, let me let me get this right. Do you all um, advocate? Yeah, can you come in? Over? Do you all advocate <laughs> in your schools? I mean, to go and help out to, to show how dance can be used in English, and dance can be used in mathematics, and dance can be used in history. Do you all advocate these? The integration of dance. Yeah, the, in the, the, integration, yes. Yes, yeah. do you all do it or walk around and tell the teachers, I would like to work with you today um, I to come in and show the teachers? Yeah, go ahead. I don't, but um, the teachers, they started to realize what dance is and how they can work with dance. So they come to me and they ask, Miss, how I could do this? And, and you mind working with me 
to, to get a subject area or a topic across and we work together. But it's not that I have to run and say, I teach and dance and I can help you. No, no, they're actually coming and showing the interest. Okay. Kelly? Kelly? All right. Um, I, I really want to weigh in here and I'm letting you know up front that my opinion here is going to be unpopular, but it does not take away from its from it being factual, nor does it take away from it being valid. Right? So earlier on, I saw a comment from Shaquille, I hope I'm, I'm saying your name correctly, Shaquille Jones, where he spoke about the narrative of dance being that of the underdog. I, um, I have always been a fan of understanding your craft. It is not my role within the secondary school system to prove dance worth to staff. That is not my role. My role there in, in the secondary school, that is, is to dance educate, to teach the education, the science of dance. Done properly, administration and staff will take notice. I was at my school for many years and did not by choice participate in a single competition because I did not want the focus to be removed from what it was supposed to be. The children looked at it after a while of, um, as, an, as an academic. They recognized that while it may be fun, while it does make me feel better, while it does help me to ease whatever stress and my dance room is a safe space, et cetera, et cetera, there is science in what I am doing, right? So I do not subscribe to, and I know I might be the one of few, if not the only dance teacher, that does not subscribe to these competitions. And my reason really is the competition must offer um, real benefit to children. For example, um, WASA does a quiz, right? And, and Unit Trust does, um, I'm not sure if they do the quiz or if they are just one of the prize givers, but at the end of the quiz, the children receive units, thousands of units for the child. We would send our children to dance and they would be in rehearsals for hours. We would spend money for oh costuming God. and we would take up our own time. We'll take the children's time away from studying other academic subjects. And at the end of the day, the school gets $350 for the school, not for the child. The child might get a certificate. Now, I'm not saying that there is not value in the children learning to perform and to compete, but that value must be comparable so that any parent looking at it and say, okay, should my child be on the debate team or should she go and dance? Because they both require the same amount of effort and energy. There would be a real dilemma because both, both um, offer real tangible benefit. Yeah? Um, with regard to the dance room being a safe space, my room when I had one, it was a safe space. And I did provide all the niceties of breakfast when they didn't have, et cetera, et cetera. However, it was a place of discipline. Many teachers problem with dance and dance teachers currently. And when I say teachers, I mean other staff, not dance teachers. Um, a lot of other staff teachers tell me the children seem to have no discipline. And it is something that I myself have seen when a child comes into a dance space, there is a lack of discipline. So because we have, I want to say, removed a lot of the discipline in dance or the disciplining in dance and dance education, your staff and your principals may very well be misinformed. With regard to that hierarchy, um, I want to disagree with that respectfully. Um, it is not a narrative that I accept, because if I accept it, and I want to also say that I am acting HOD at my school, so when it is presented to me in meetings and VAPA, because it's not dance, then it's VAPA, doesn't get whatever we are agitating for, Kelly, I am I able to... One second. Could you just mm -hmm. turn on your volume a little bit, because we're getting some feedback. Could you just turn on your volume a little bit? I can try. I that's actually good. don't know how to do that. That's right. Okay. Yeah. okay. That's okay. Let's get up now. So yeah, go ahead. Sorry to. Talk All right. To you. No, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, just to sum up, my, just to sum up my point, I'm going back to we as the teachers, we as the we as the persons that are charting the way for our younger students. We are the persons that are laying the bricks ahead of us. What really are the bricks and the stepping stones that we are are we setting? Are we letting 
um, just by the way that we operate, are we letting persons know that this is a science or are we letting them think that this is a free for all? Okay, understood. But um, Kelly, I, I, I heard what you said just now, but mm -hmm. um, do you think it will differ with the, um, the culture of the school? Because the school you teach, I expect... No, that, no. I believe, no, I, well, well, I, well no. coming from a teaching point of view, I taught at bishops and I will teach at uh -huh. the next school. And because okay. of the culture of the children, certain schools will give you, mm -hmm. you, you, you can do all those things you said without be having the hierarchy and all these things going on. And in certain I would parts, like to tell you though, that I first, my first teaching appointment by the Ministry of Education was at Union Claxton Bay Secondary. So it was not always ham, lamb and jam. If you want to term the school that I teach at, ham, lamb and jam. I taught at Union Claxton Bay Secondary. So that is, just like a junior secondary of, of old. And from the year that I got Form 5 students, there was a 100% pass rate. So success is not optional. But you are good. We need, good we need to move. We have to give you we need to move, that. We need to move beyond um, dance education, latching on to emotional, emotional and psychological benefits. Schools aren't, and policymakers aren't interested in that. They want to know about scholarships. They want to know about how is dance education or VAPA moving your institution forward? Because more than likely, that ties into corporate responsibility and getting additional funds and things done for the school. Exactly, and I'm going again. You said earlier on that you haven't um, taken any of your, for a long time, you haven't taken them to competitions. Now, the beauty about those things wait. is that, the beauty no, wait, about those wait. things is that. I, I can stop you with that. Um, for a long time, I didn't. Now I do, and I can tell you why I do. I teach Form 6 Performing Arts, Unit 2 Dance, and Unit 1 Business of the Arts. As part of the Unit 2 for Performing Arts Dance, um, the children's success portfolio must have choreo choreography, right. multiple choreographies. So it makes sense. There is direct benefit to all of my children, each doing choreography for that competition. So Miss Watty will not have a single choreography in that competition, but my form six students who must develop a choreographic portfolio will all have said choreographic portfolio. And they would have gotten external feedback because when they meet teachers like Mr. Batiste one and two, when they meet past teachers like Miss D'Souza, if their choreography was nonsense, they go in at them. You understand? So there is benefit. But if it's just for, this, for the children to experience it, well, I, I would toss up on the actual benefit of having participated in it. No, because I only say that, I only say that because um, a lot of choreographers, strong choreographers, dancers who turn choreographers, go into these schools as dance teachers. And they want to see their children perform, even though they're teaching the, the dance education, they still would prefer a performing dance education um, process. So I think Roxanne can explain that a little. I believe, I believe there has to be a balance because um, we're teaching the children the educative part of dance, right? And then there are those who love the dance. And when you take the children out of the school into these areas of competition whether it be backstage or in the or in the auditorium they learn a discipline so i kind of do understand when kelly is saying that there's no there's a lack of discipline because when i take my children out they have to be disciplined they have to have that discipline before they leave the school i have children who give trouble in school and when they hear we going out, miss we could go we could go i say you can't go if it is you're giving trouble in school and they start to pull up their socks because they want to go and when they go it's like oh let nobody have to talk to you and they behave and they even look at the behavior of other schools and they realize oh miss this way let's be talking about the ACC is what you teach your children and it can't just be you can't just have them locked down we are not a subject to sit in front of a blackboard all the time and scribble scribble we doing um this the mathematics all the theorems all the this we are a practical and in our syllabus it says that we are supposed to take the children out to these competitions whether it is you're taking them to perform or you're taking them to view, view. Because 
doing is as much as important as being on that stage and sometimes even more important and i mean so saying in addition to what you're saying to roxanne if we are teaching content the children need to see it in practice so we can't just do the content in the classroom and not have them experience what a performance is like we talk about the stage space and the theater space and all of that as part of our curriculum how else are the children to experience that by not taking them to those spaces by not having them experience those things so not take, say, um, not not taking the children to competition does not mean that the children don't go out. My children probably go on more field trips than my administration would like. Um, no, I have, ad <laughs> I have advocated. <laughs> no, no, no. It's just this yeah. year. My, I have advocated for my administration to put on the book list a thousand dollars cash for field trips. Of course, I'm not going to get that. But I take my children. Um, most recently, we went to Miss Burke's production. Me. Prior to that, we went to um, um, something in Queens Hall, and we go to um, sometimes we come we come and look at Sandfest, depending on what is happening. Um, of course, every single in school program that we are given the required amount of time to prepare for we prepare additionally the children perform for themselves because it's as you say because the subject is mandatory um, not every child is comfortable or based on religious purposes or or just behavioral issues not every child is able to perform in front of people so that is something that i build gradually so i do support the balance definitely so um, there will be, be, be a little devil, devil's advocate here. Um, with all the word that's going around <laughs> over the internet right now, Facebook and so forth, is entanglement. So let's work a little on this word entanglement within dance. Um, a child who comes in with natural ability, how do you all expect to, because that entanglement web of trying to work the academia with the practical and a child who comes in with natural ability wants to go more on the practical and the academia kinds of hold them back and i heard them say it already so how do you all deal with that as dance educators i have dance classes after school for those who are more academically inclined and even not academically inclined but have the heart to want to dance i have dance classes after school i keep it on I give okay. it on lunchtime. Oh, you do it at lunchtime, so you help them out. You have them out. It was at the distance of where I am. So. Oh, okay, okay. Then I, used to, I, used, I used to do it after school, but not again. Okay. <laughs> Greg, so I might have right? misunderstood. Do you want to? Okay, because inherent in every dance program, or scheme that we may create as teachers, we have what we call the same three modalities, dance, dance appreciation, and dance making. Students get the opportunity to create their dance. So whatever skills they may come with, Gregor, this is the time in which you see them come out. Okay, so they are, they are allowed to so what are the three can you can you explain again to the viewing public the three modalities because we are here to dance, learn dance, dance dance appreciation and dance making okay. and in the last one of course dance making this is where the students are allowed based again on the approach of the teacher and what the and i will go through it again and said it's all about the process the dance making becomes the product really at the end of it all but the students look forward to that they look okay. forward to working as a team and working in groups to create something at the end of it. So you have taught X, Y, and Z, and at the end of it, let's see you now related to whatever or associated with whatever we what you would have been taught in the lesson. So the dance making component is very important for those children. In fact, for all the students, I'm not going to say for those children only, but they become the leaders in the whole dance making process they are the ones who say uh, why we can't do this because i learned this from dance class or i i know this from seeing this on television so you have those who will 
of course, okay. be encouraged that way. Okay, um, Kelly, I know that you are the only one on the panel that is doing CAPE, <coughs> teaching CAPE level of dance education. Congratulations. Can you explain to us the difference between CAPE, um, dance education for CAPE and dance education for this year? Yeah, CSEC. CSEC? What's the difference? Uh, is, is there um, any other? There is difference. Um, um, theater arts, dance rather, or theater arts as it is in Form 4 and Form 5, really focuses um, on, the, that's the beginning of the focus on the process, right? Encompassing the three areas that Joanna just spoke about, appreciating, analyzing, and creating. Um, theater arts is like an introductory level to that. When they get to CAPE level, however, we take you to task for your decisions. So in, in Form 5, Yes, we understand that you would have turned left because the name of the song is left, left hand side and the name of the dance is to the left. But in form six, we will challenge you and say, well, yes, everything is left, but why not turn to the right? So in form six, we, we delve into the history. We dance into what has been happening in society and how that has affected dance through the years. We delve into pioneers of dance through different centuries. We delve into choreographers their choreography and their choreographic styles and nuances. We delve into what you like as a, as a budding choreographer and what would you like to borrow from, a, from, a, from one of those choreographers and twist and turn and what we would call improvise to make it your own. And once you have made it your own, we take you to task on it. Why is this that you are presenting as your own valid? And you are expected to represent your ideas and your thoughts, speaking the language of dance as eloquently as if you were taking a Spanish oral or a French oral. Um, in theater arts, you are introduced to the elements of dance in a more detailed, um, in a more detailed way. So you're taught the language, you're taught the what, where, how, with whom um, element of dance. And in form, form six, you're really pushed to explore and determine it as yours. In th and that's the unit two. For the unit one, um, this unit, I absolutely love it because this element of dance is not available anywhere in Trinidad until postgraduate level, right? That's the business of dance or the business of the arts rather. And what that unit teaches you is how to take this thing that you love so much aside, put, push the passion aside, push the love for it aside, push, push the, it makes me whole aside and determine how am I going to eat from doing this thing that I love every day. So it teaches me how to market my craft, how to monetize my craft, how to write letters justifying my, um, my, my cause or my craft. How am I going to, to get money from Ms. D'Souza, who is a multi-billionaire? I would learn how to write up a business plan. I would, learn, <laughs> I would learn how to do a SWOT analysis. I would learn how to make my business pitch. So yes, they would come out still with their passion and their love for everything, but now they can turn their dance, their love of dance into into um into money into into something that can feed them and now i'm seeing karen post posting the topics and things like that and yes it's there but i really just wanted to explain what happens okay. and why cape is beneficial but kelly with the, um with the same cape i know that we have had some setbacks with respect to theater arts and COVID 19 and i know in our theater show which is held usually on a friday they would have discussed extensively some of their challenges, especially um, in particular one of the, um, I think it was the third unit or something like that they were supposed to do and I know they had problems. Did you have any kind of setback with respect to dance at the Cape level? All right, well, at, um, at the Cape level, it's not really theater, mainly it's um, unit two dance or unit two drama or unit two music or unit two cinematic That's arts. Good. right. Yeah. And the drama teachers and I have actually been working together to try to resolve the exact same issue. There are three examinable papers um, for, the, for each unit. There is the paper one, which is the written paper, now multiple choice entirely. There is the paper two for dance. That means that the children as a group in groups of three to five um, must do a warm-up routine. And that warm-up routine is to guide, must last 30 minutes, and it's really to warm the body up 
to the end of um well let me put it this way when you're in a dance class you know what choreography you want to teach at the end you do your warm-up to suit the choreography that you want to reach at the end right so they have to create a warm-up that is suited towards their solos so the two exams at that unit well at that paper the paper two is the warm-up the group warm-up and then each child must choreograph a solo the warm-up must show its path to the solo choreographies right so that one um, and I must say hats off to my, my, I don't want to say girls because I have one boy and yes, I do take boys. I'm the only person doing it in the country and we've already passed two boys successfully through. So um, if you have boys, bring them to me, I'll take them, right? Um, we were able to do that paper, I believe it's the 24th of June. Yes, that was in COVID time. Our exams were scheduled for the 24th and 26th or 23rd and 25th of March, and we never got to do it. So that was facilitated in June. On the 15th of June, however, we got information or communication just as the drama unit teachers did that the children would be expected to do the paper three, which was absolutely um, out of this world impossible um, the paper itself is a public event where you must host a full dance event for a community and our community was our school and we didn't have schools in operation um, and you it, one of the markers for success is you must do choreographies for duets or of duets trios small groups large groups and you must show different choreographic styles and you must link your choreography or you must be able to link your choreography to one of the choreographers that we would have studied. And um, it has to make money for it to be determined a success. Just by the definition of, um, just by the definition of what is expected for the exam, a public event for more than 30 people, where the children must do all the conceptualizing, marketing, fundraising, post analysis, pre analysis, setup, strike, everything. They are responsible for everything. Just that scope alone made it impossible, especially with two weeks between the date that we were given that communication and the end. So, yes, we are still currently facing that battle. And thankfully, the children's parents are extremely supportive of of how the teachers have been um, moving forward with it. Okay, nice. Okay, okay. We're very, but um, you teach them how to make money. Mm -hmm. but make money in which way? What, what do, how do you, how do you uh, expand, expand on that for me? I don't understand what you mean by you teach them how to make money with dance. Okay, the business of, of the business of the arts teaches the children how to turn their passion into income whether i'm seeing uh thomas presto is asking if they if we teach them to be their own employer yes but the choice really is them if i am a if i am an artist i have to understand costing my time and my talent and my performance i have to understand if something is a viable um option for me and i will give another controversial um example something that we discuss in class all the time let's look at soka monarch if I would like to be a professional um, dance artist or something like that, and I'm applying to a college or something to get, um, whether it's Yale drama or Yale arts or whichever arts you want to go to FI, FL, Florida, FIU, you want to go to NYU. We want to go to any um, college <laughs> like that. I need to make sure that the information that I put on my resume uplifts, yes? However, if I am an employer and maybe I am, I am looking to see what caliber, what quality um, performance my candidates would have come from, and I Google Soka Monarch, um, my expectation of what you'd be able to present is going to drop. Right? So oh. it is. I mean, it may not sound nice, but it's is going to drop. Pardon? Is that a shade? No, it's not shade. And I, that's why I don't want you all to look at this as shade. No, go ahead, go however, ahead. however, if I have seen for the Marsh Gras, I have seen excellent performances. 
That caliber, however, is not carried to um, Soka Monarch, as far as I have seen, and I tend to look at Soka Monarch very um, regularly. So it is not shade in any, in any sense, but it is also teaching them to make wise decisions. Look at the culture we have of, of um, I don't know, that dance hall trend where the girls are, um, where the, all of them, they dagger in and they this and they rolling on the floor and they're flipping backwards and really and truly. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that. I would say to each his own, but we no, need to that, understand no, I mean, which. I mean, that is, that is, um, that is the, um, what do you call it, urban? Mm -hmm. That is the urban style of dancing. And you would not believe there's a technique to that. No, if you look at, if you look at, I would like us to think globally here, if we look at the orange economy outside of the Caribbean, because within the Caribbean, we generally don't have an orange economy, which is a creative arts economy. If we look at the orange economy outside of here, there is, a, a, um, there is that market. However, even the standard, which is available for that outside is different. Look at okay. Neo and their, and their videos. When those yeah. girls wind down, they may wind down, but they wind down at a different color. But is that making sense to you? I'm asking. The technique to it. Yeah, yeah there is. There is. So you, you see the science and the choreography and it's, it's, re it's relation to um, the symbolism in the dance. Is that what we see when we look at um, Soka Monarch? I would even bring it home. Look at Marshall Montano. Their performances, though raunchy, Nail on the head. I will pay money to look at them any day. Love it. Love it, love it. Okay, but you talk about males, and I want to pass this on to the lone male on the panelist because he will carry this further. What approach would you utilize, Mr. Batiste, to encourage young males to become interested in dance education classes? What, okay. what approach would you use? Well, um, firstly, when I um, teach my children in school from form one straight up to form five, most of them, they are um, more interested in sport. So I would use that angle within my classroom and link it to the dance. The sport aspect. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah, the children get the boys get to like it. Yeah. Yeah. To take them from where they are okay. to where you want them yeah. to be. Because also in the PE, there is the dance. Um, there's a dance element. Um, yes. Element. Yeah. Yes. Any others? Any? Well, I know Miss France, Charles, <laughs> Joanna, would you please? <laughs> Miss Joan, I know I've seen you in a long while with Barataria South Secondary, and you had most of the boys in between mm. you and Maribel. I don't know which one had more boys. <laughs> you had plenty of boys on stage doing Mr. John Bully and so forth at Sandfest. How did you imply how did you get that to happen? What so method so you what what was your method? Okay. Nine. Um, we need to understand that most of these children who dance for shows aren't necessarily students that you teach in the class. Oh. They are students who will like who like to dance after school. So the young men that you might have seen at that point in time would have been interested in dancing with the girls. So that was the um, the <laughs> attraction. So there were girls there. So they came and they learned and they performed. Um, as Dion, as Ion would have said, again, you encourage them with things like, you know, boys are more Athletic. mathematical inclined. So you will encourage them with things like shapes and abstract movement and all of that. Those things will encourage the, the guys to want to be part of. So it's what kind of material you're bringing to them to attract them to dance. I, um, came across, uh, I came across an article um, yesterday, Boys Dancing. It was yes, written yes, by David Penner, right? And he speaks about introducing boys to dance. And I feel this is really what, um, yeah. we, when we look at the boys, he said, how do we get boys interested in dance? The answer is to make each class playful, yeah. athletic, creative, expressive, and stimulating. Boys need a simple step-by-step -step structure to follow, constant encouragement and the opportunity to sharpen their skills and learn new moves, right? And it's a lot of things that we do, just as Joanna and Ian said, they play sports. So you look at all the movements that they do in sports and you start to bring it into the dance room. You don't segregate it or tell them because 
from the time they come in my room, they want to slide. So we need to start to take all those movements and start to put them. The take off the socks, the roll it up, the kick in a bowl. So we need to remove these socks and we need to look at the movement that you're doing, kicking the bowl and where we can develop that and take it into dance. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I'm not pushing that, but um, I, I look at a lot of the um, posts that Miss Liana Boyce, I think she was teaching where? Moruga? Moruga Secondary. And some, she, her classroom is always lively and she's always vexed with her upset with the other teachers around because the <clears> teachers <throat> don't seem to um, think in her school that dance is really yeah. <laughs> viable to a financial future. However, I think Miss um, Liana needs to get a visit from Miss Kelly. In that school, I mean, Kelly need to go and tell them teachers exactly how how it's working. Because see what we have it here. We have the panel here who could go around to the schools and help these um these teachers who are getting really and teachers get problems. Some um the other yes. teachers, dance teachers get problems from administration. Gregor, can I can I yes, contribute can. to that? I just have one question. Within this whole COVID thing, how many dancers have gotten paid? Because that's really the true test of whether or not dance currently is a viable career so how many of us have gotten paid well we have five thousand to As, collect for the ministry of um <laughs> and and um my other question if that's your response is are you really grateful for that because if you look at what's happening every other art has been offered a financial recourse they have been incentives offered for dance, not for dance, sorry, for drama, for music, and for visual arts institutions. None have been offered for dance. And I bring that question back to, are we paying attention? Are we doing what it is we are supposed to be doing? Are we getting involved in policy making and, and decision and planning? And if, if we think that just being able to dance for years gives us lineage to get into there, um, we would be wrong. Where is our National Dance um, Association? Association? They're becoming, they're how, working on. How, how many of us have artists, uh, artists um, insurance? Insurance. You know, so so what um what really are we doing as a community? Because we will sit and say, um, you know, I didn't get this and I didn't get that. And but the, the question is, what are we doing to get it? We have to get up and get. Yeah. I think I think that um, a lot of people who have experienced dance as a career outside of Trinidad and Tobago um, have really experienced what you're talking about, Kelly. The insurance, getting paid, the the standard at which people perceive dance to be. So it is the for me. I would really love for them, and I think Thomas Tallow is one of them who's doing it. Delta and Frank, just to name a few, who have come back and say, "You all listen." You see, all that we have been experienced so far, this is this is just, this is not it, you know. It have more, it have another step to go. And I think our dance association is the right body, body I mean, because it's a national, on a national level, the right body to bring our dancers up, even to educate the ones who will think that it's impossible to take dance to that next level on a, on a national scale. Yes, until I love what you talk about, then you talk about um, policy, because people don't recognize it's from that level that all of these things that we want, the little grant that they're giving us now, you know, we have to fight for it and all of that. People don't realize that these policies are the things that um that that put these things in place for us. Correct. At this time, I, right? Mm -hmm. at, at this time, viewers, I would ask you, I would invite you to send your voice notes. It could be a comment or it could be a question to anyone on the panel, right? So send your voice notes now to 319-8100. Viewing members, you are invited to send your voice notes now to 319-8100. Could be a comment or a question towards the panelists. Now, I have this question here. And I don't know how some people might take it, but it's not to offend. It's just for us to um, expound. And, you know, a lot of people think that a dance teacher <coughs> should be able to execute physically all that they want children to do now i know it's about perception and people would have in their mind that um okay you're teaching ballet you should be able to do all these um what are bras these back moors these these jetties and all these grand fantastic things right i know that there are also dance teachers who sit and teach and talk 
I want to find out from you all your opinion in terms of dance teachers being physically fit to teach the subject of dance, especially in a dance school, education. especially in the school environment. <laughs> Okay, let me break it down for you. All right, right, yeah. play. All right you understand? If you can't play, then you can't teach our players. Like, go ahead. You can't just sit down and tell you and play means to bend. Okay, go for ahead. Me that, that, for me, that's dependent on a couple of factors. One, what is the age group of the children that you are teaching? Because if I am teaching my two-year-olds, as I do in my studio, yes, I absolutely have to demonstrate everything that I would like them to do. If I am teaching two-year-olds who or ten-year-olds who have been dancing their entire lives, I can't sit and say I would need to see X, Y, Z and explain what I want the body to do to a certain extent. At secondary school level, the the actual mm -hmm. things that you want them to do, at, uh, uh, they well, for me, I can speak for myself, aren't impossible. They aren't difficult. And if these are children who are not dancers um, by any stretch of the imagination, um, yes, you need to be able to show them for those that are visual learners. Yeah? So, for it depend on, it's dependent on that for me, the level at which the child is and the skill level that the child is at. What about you, Joanna? Um, I would say, <laughs> as I, I'll use Roxanne's B word, it's a balance. If you can explain it to the point that the student will understand, we are also given the opportunity to fix the students as you will want them to be fixed. So for example, as Gregor talked about the, the play, if you're doing a grand play, and we also have video that the students could look at Technology. In, case that the teacher, in case the teacher can't demonstrate for herself. So you have all these options available to you. The teacher doing the demonstration, the teacher fixing the student, the teacher explaining and giving the proper teaching points so that they, whatever exercise or whatever movement being given will be executed in the right manner. And also, we also have the videos to rely on. Correct. So, so the mul here comes to play the multiple intelligences. Correct. Correct. Oh, okay. So you, while you say correct, would you like to explain that a little to the audience? So you have this intelligence <laughs> <laughs> that Gardner came up with. And... <laughs> You have children who, of course, are visual learners, those who are auditory learners, and those, of course, are the ones who are the tactile ones. So you need to touch and fix to suit. So you can do that with some of them. And then there are some who have all the learning skills as best that they are, all the learning skills available to them. So, yeah, so we, again, address all these different types of learning styles um while teaching something that we may not be able to execute ourselves or and and also we may have students in the class who may be dancers on the outside and of course you bring them them to you're bringing them to use so you use them as your demonstrators when it comes to um doing a particular exercise and of course, the, the students love to see the teachers move their movement. So even if you're doing a, a sequence of movements and you can, you can put it, you may not be able to fully execute at as, as it's supposed to be done. I love to tell them, I love all the money and also I can't do that, but you have to go down. And I would kind of give them all my be able to do it once. So make sure you watch it good because after this, I can't go down again. And then as Joanna said, you might have somebody in the class who might be able to do it. So you can use them or use technology to view it. But a lot of the trend based because of the level that we teach in the secondary school for the one to three, especially by the time they reach four and five, they're supposed to be able to understand the movement a bit more or look at it from videos by the one to threes. What we teach them is, um, I don't want to use the word basic, but it's minimal to the movement of dance as in a dance studio. So you should be able to use a student to show them, okay, so I show you a, a demi plie. I can do the demi plie. So when I do the grand now, I can take a student and get them to go down and, and position their feet. And when you start to position the children, they understand better than just watching you do it. Actually, they do. When you start to fix a child, they understand what the body has to do more than just watching you doing it. And most of our dance rooms have come equipped with mirrors. So they also see themselves and they're able to adjust. They do. 
<laughs> most of our I said most. No, <laughs> I think that's the operative most of our dance rooms. Most do of not. our dance rooms. <laughs> And the children are able to see themselves and also adjust to suit. But the teacher, also needs, the teacher also needs to be able to talk to them. Yes. I have a little well, problem because um, Mr. Talawa, he said, well, I am, was burdened with the hard task of trying to teach folk dance, online teaching. Hmm. I almost died. <laughs> because the children doing whatever they want, you can't fix yeah. them, you can't yeah. help them. And it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it was like you're teaching yourself, and I I haven't got accustomed to that yet. I mean, coming on to the fifth week, I was all right, but it was too late because it's only five weeks. Um, how do you deal with that part of the question? And Mindy ask, tying into that now with the online teaching. Will you have, will you still get people from well explain it to me now? <laughs> Panel? Well, okay. I, um, I, um, I did yes. have to teach during the COVID um period. Like I said, my form sixes had exams. They had both their um units one and two paper two exams. And I I am not uh, an advocate of online dance teaching, dance class teaching at all, and I can tell you why. One of the hardest thing to do is to unbreak something that has been broken. And if a child's body, if her movement memory has latched on to stick in that bottom out when she's doing that play, hell to pay to get that child to squeeze that bum under, right? Um, so I did not teach any dancing online, not for my um, Ministry of Education job or my private studio because I own an operator studio as well. We did not do any online teaching because we did not want to have to unbreak um, things that were broken. What I do is a science, it is a craft. And just like the science teachers cannot conduct a lab online because there are several untold dangers, I cannot teach a dance class online because really and truly, unless those children are seasoned dancers beyond an examinable level, you're spinning top in mud. That was just my um, take, but I did have space, I must say, and the support of parents to bring the children in where we could have amply socially distanced. There are um, five children in my class, myself and my second teacher, and well, of course, I had my kids on my hip while I was teaching. So in my studio, there were less than 10 of us, so we didn't break any laws. And we were all able to socially distance, but I did not teach at all dancing online. online. <laughs> okay, yeah. um, yes, but um, while we were home here in the COVID, Dion actually did his um, classes online because he has form five students. I don't have any. And he was able to teach them well and do the corrections with them on their bodies because they, because they are accustomed to it. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So he was able to demonstrate and yeah. of course look at the videos and see who's doing yeah. whatever and verbally correct them. Yes. Okay. So I guess Terry Springer said it just now. It, it, there is, it's, it's a balance that we have to find. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a balance. Not everybody is able to teach online. I try teaching online. Woo! Trust me. That's a lot of who knows? Um, come September, we may have to end up still teaching online. Well, Terry just said that, Terry Springer just said, which Terry Springer is saying plenty tonight. <laughs> so what would you do if we couldn't go back to the classrooms? Terry, I'd be um, a medical doctor. <laughs> I'll, make, I'll, I'll change professions. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's very integral that we have this face-to-face -face where dance practicals are concerned. Yes, you could do all in theory. Those things can happen in Google Classroom on Zoom and those things. Face-to-face right. -face connection, that for me, Personally, it is very integral and unnecessary. Correct. Okay, well, um, the next if question you, is... Yes, so that's the if you sorry, do try to, um, to teach online, it limits what you can do, what you would have been able to do than if you were face-to-face -face with them, especially when you're looking at students who don't really know what they're doing because they can injure their bodies, right? If you're looking at those who are more trained, like Terry, Terry's a new university, so all those students are supposed to be able to to understand 
so it's it's easier but when you're looking at the ones to three who have never danced before they just being put in the in the subject area because it's it, it's on the curriculum so they don't really know so it's a bit more challenging so then it limits what we can do but thanks sister pa first to thomas Calwa because he said remember i said i was teaching folk online okay not a qualified form right see how it's different there exactly <laughs> it's polyrhythmic so you see it's a big difference there so yeah so yeah we will try Miss, mr thomas Dalawa. we are working very hard on trying to codify the folk i am sorry that my generation get the the burden of having to do this <laughs> because there were some great people in the past who could have done it but we are burdened with it next question this because we're talking caribbean and most of you all are teaching in a in caribbean atmosphere how do you ensure that students experience how rituals and customs of a society are expressed in dance? Joanna? Do you want to hear it again? I, I yes, know. I, I hear. Okay, go ahead. Repeat, Gregor. Repeat. I feel like the man was here with him. Harvey. Repeat, repeat, Gregor. <laughs> how do you ensure that students experience? how rituals and customs of a society of a society are expressed in dance how do you ensure that this happens again based on the curriculum framework that we work with there are several folk dances that we have to teach these students um so we basic we have a basic outline where we will deal with the history and of course the rituals and the origin of the dance so that's the theoretical part of it. We will also look at the costuming. We will also look at the music. We will also look at the paraphernalia that these dancers that come along with these dancers. And last but not least, we will look at the movements associated with, the, with these dancers. So we have a point-to-point -point system that we go through when we are teaching these particular, when we are teaching folk dance on the whole. And the folk dancers, stem from bongo to kalinda to ballet to poropo to jig orisha. we have some orisha dances inside of there too and we are also in inclusive in there is also our carnival dances which and is a big part of our of, yeah. of course and we have the kolotum and the, the jal well, the Katana oh, is Katana. more classical. So, so you yeah. explain to them? Do, sorry, go ahead, Diana. No, you what you're going to ask? So do you explain to them what the ritual, these collateral and the jaru are being used? What that's, what, that's what I said. We yeah. have these, these set points that we need to go through. So the children will have the history, the origin, the reason behind the dance, and all of that included in their information on the particular dance. So the children get to, the children get to um, at any point the children get to create their own like create their own um, ritual dance. Yeah, if that is part of the creative process, by all mm -hmm. means, yes, that will happen. So they so, do get a they, they, what, what I was I wanted to find out. So I mean, I'm a teacher as well. I think most people know that, right? Mm -hmm. And my question is to you all based on your experience we have the curriculum we have the list of dances or different um criteria different things we want the children to learn about because it's not only about our heritage dances okay we know we have other areas that we want them to learn about um and once you go through the curriculum and you cover these areas you cover these specific dances we, we assume yes the children will get exposed to the rituals and the um the different um, dances, folk dances, I want to call them, of the nation. So you know the heritage is being passed on and all of that. That is once we get the curriculum. But my, my thing is, okay, how so realistic is that? How, is it we will get through all. Yes. That's my question. And, is it and, and my other point is to, based on what Gregor was asking with respect to rituals and so on, documentation is so important. So even if we, as the teachers, want to share the information with the children 
is what is available out yeah, there with respect sure. to documentation of these particular dances. Okay, so that's one. In truth and in fact, the curriculum is just a guide. Not all dances, you will get through it. Reality is, we will you not get through it all. You okay, it, it doesn't happen. But you try your best to. What I um, try to do is put dances within the term. So according to what is happening in term one, like for instance, you may have Diwali coming up and so on, you will do dances to suit. Yes. So right. uh, Kalata may come in or, but somebody just said Dandia, but we call it Kalata in Trinidad and um, Jahari will come in also. We also may have, mm -hmm. we all, so carnival time or term two comes around, we have the carnival dances that we may look at. Or you may look at bongo if you're looking at wakes. Um, term three comes around, we may have some other dance that people want to highlight at that point in time. So I go according to terms and I will highlight the dances according to what is happening in the country at that point in time. And there yeah, are times you all say carnival. You all say carnival dances. Do you mm -hmm. all meet children as dance educators that carnival is a ritual and there is a ritual involved? And do children know these rituals? They know the ritual that's involved? Because I mean that yeah, let me just ask the question and you all do it. You are the educators. <laughs> When 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 it's carnival and I, I teach for me what well, I teach them from um where we have the the Cambole. Cambole right. So we start with the Cambole ritual so they understand the Cambole, the burning of the flame, the um burning of the cane yeah. and what happens and I try to always get a video that they can better see more. Uh, sorry, but I'm not carrying the form ones and trees that out uh, early in the morning, <laughs> right? But I always encourage them and I always tell them it's there if you want, if your parents want to take you, right? And then we look at what happens during that time and then we proceed into how carnival developed, taking it, you know, looking looking at from the, the slave master's point of view, bringing in the African ritual into it and how it, it came about to be what it is now, the bikini and beads. So they understand that carnival is not just bikini and beads. Actually, um, a lot of these things are on YouTube. So you can, if they cannot go, they can view it from YouTube. Well, um, no, it's the real thing. So it's the recordings, the recordings of the event. Yes, yes. Of the event. yes Kelly. If, if. <laughs> No, we love you, Kelly. Oh, for us. Yes, Kelly. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. I, I do have a, a question. When you say ritual of, of carnival as a ritual, I'm wondering what you mean because um, we teach children that there are different characteristics to determine something, a ritual. Um, in a teacher discussion many years ago, we spoke about whether carnival was in fact a ritual or not. Um, and if carnival is a ritu ritual, why are we not exploring Carifesta as a ritual? So that carnival being a ritual might be ticklish. You might want to look at wakes as a ritual or bongo as a ritual because there are defining characteristics that we can draw on a line and say this matches this, matches this, matches this. But for carnival, it's so broad a scope that for me, I don't teach it as a, a ritual. I teach it as a festival. As, as, as of like, them, no, different there, aspects within the carnival. There's a ritual yes. that goes with carnival that starts from Juve morning and ends on carnival Tuesday night. We don't do it anymore. We don't practice it anymore. And that's why, I, I, according to one of the Calypsonians, all these imps are running around. <laughs> Um, they, they forget the carnival and run around being very busy during the rest of the year because they don't close off the ritual or start the ritual. But long ago, they used to blow a horn before the early before dawn, or they say for the morn. Mm -hmm. They used to blow a big horn in the middle of all Spain, and you know, carnival gonna start at the end. It used to tame down, everything would wind out, and everybody would leave on a like, very well, tame well. note going yeah. home. So this is why lap. I'm asking 
This is yeah. why I'm asking, is there a ritual or is carnival a ritual? Because that of that which you were speaking about is not um that ritual is not exercised. So currently carnival is bracketed as a festival. Yeah, because the ritual it. is not happening. And that but you mean, have the fact that you have that knowledge of the ritual, I will be calling you to talk to my class next year. Well, well, you see, Dennis Plumas, listen to the Calypso, it's so elevated than Dennis Plumas, Dennis Plumas, Calypso, it is a catharsis. Dennis Plumas have it in, a, in her Calypso, catharsis. But you see what happens here in Trinidad, a lot of the things have turned to be festival and losing the ritual form. Because if you look at um, the bongo and what all these things, I mean, me and Mindy had big arguments on this. Once you're costuming a bongo on stage, you can't put two different colors. Because everybody mind a bongo is a wake dance, a funerary mm -hmm. dance. So mm -hmm. once you're costuming it for a, a dance on stage, I don't believe that you're supposed to put it in pretty colors because that's the part that's part of the the ritual you are trying to show if you use the colors of funerals. Same thing goes to the limbo. We have lost the ritual side. We only do the presentational side, and everybody knows the presentational side. So you know there are a lot of rituals involved, but we are we are slowly moving away. From the rituals and looking at more the presentation. It's time for voice notes. Good night to the panel, the hosts, and everyone there. Just want to put in my two cents with Julia Leger Stewart here, dance Chet Bar for East Secondary School. What I also do is I have students do peer teaching. So the ones that grasp the concept or the movements that I'm teaching at the point in time they can also help the teacher teach the class as well okay so yes what julia's actually pointing out there is one of the pedagogical strategies because we know i mean we, we kind of passed on it earlier Student. and we have um where lessons may be teacher centered student centered student centered yeah. or we have peer teaching right yeah. i i i tend to in the past when i just started to teach tend to be teacher centered but i realized the importance of encouraging the students to teach that is to teach their peers or to have some kind of um peer teaching going on anybody else have had any other experience with respect to trying all these different methods of teaching peer teaching is always good it keeps the children focused because when when they have to be working with the, the peers and not just do um copying what you have done they they tend to work better than just copying what what the teacher has put out there for them to do so i love peer teaching and they tend to learn from their peers yeah. for me they, it also brings out the critical thinking skills all the benefits we spoke about before the critical yes. thinking skills the the fact that they have to learn cooperation yes mm -hmm. um i wanted to find out now we know that dance is part of vapor visual and performing arts for those who don't know. And it involves several um, areas, which is visual arts, drama, dance, music. And uh, we talking whole program about how important it is, the benefits of dance and all of that, how dance could help you in life, the careers that you could go into. Um, my question is, how important is VAPA in the primary school? I know all of us are secondary schools. Could any of you, um, give us an idea of what is going on with dance at primary school, if it exists at all, if it should be happening. I don't know. What are the problems associated with it? Okay, so about six years ago, uh, the government had a group of teachers come together to create a thematic approach to education with respect to primary school education. Um, it, it, it more or less similar to the integration thing, but it came, it, be, it, it was on a theme basis. So for example, if you had a theme like people in my community, coming out of that, you will see how many subject areas could lend some kind of support to that particular theme in teaching of the topic or the theme, people in my community. So you would have had English, math, dance, drama, all of those subject areas included in the content delivery of that particular theme. To date, 
I know the teachers at the primary school who are generalist teachers refuse to use that kind of curriculum and they have gone back to their various subjects. That's how I'm teaching my subject in a silo. So that is what it is at this point in time. And what about the um, what about the necessity? I know we spoke about the issues and the problems, and I know the Ministry of Education did attempt. I think all of us were probably teachers who had to go and um, help yep. teach the secondary, primary school teachers. But do you all think it's necessary for, for dance to begin at the primary school level? It is. And don't they go and compete in compete, do um, performing competitions? And they represent the schools? So why sure. shouldn't it be taught? Why shouldn't it be taught? It was well, taught and I'm also thinking all the social skills that the students may learn at that level also is important, important if dance is taught to them. So they learn about teamwork, they learn about the same um, psychological skills too, how to be um, a problem solver, how to think critically, and all of those things will come in if they are taught dance at primary school level. Now at primary school, they also use it as a means to an end. So they're having a concert. They will prepare, maybe there's a dance person in the school. They will yeah. prepare children for graduation or whatever concert they may have at primary school level. But to but say that dance is taught as a structured subject within the primary school at this time. No. One, of the, one of the, if not the very first exploration a person does after they are born is explore with movement. Mm -hmm. um, as soon as a baby is born, they begin opening the mouth to scream. They opening the, they're trying to open the eyes and shut it back. And the fingers are grasping things. That is movement exploration in its most primitive form. Um, up to ECCE, that child is learning to crawl, learning to walk. When that child is exposed to music, the head start to bob, the yeah, knees yeah. start to bounce, the little bum bum start to wiggle. Um, so mm -hmm. movement, movement exploration is a natural part of development on the hold, on, on the whole, sorry, not hold. Yes. Yes. Hold, yes. Yeah, hold. So <laughs> when you, when you get into ECCE, uh, most ECCE reach out and try to do movement exploration, whether it is in sport or some of them have dance programs, they have swimming programs, they have a lot of movement oriented um, um, developmental programs. And then we take them to primary school and we put them to sit and we expect them to continue developing. We are not taking into consideration when they get into primary school level that there are nine types of intelligences, but currently we, we train and we engender two. Um, the, the analytical side, no, not so much analytical side, the, the, the sciencing side, and the, the linguistic side. But there are children who are movement um, oriented. Now there are big words for all of these intelligences and that's not really where I'm trying to go. I'm just trying Ooh, to, to bring home the up, point. Yeah. yeah, I'm just trying to bring home the point that we only train two types of intelligences in primary school. So it is absolutely important that the children understand what the body can do, what, sorry, what the body can do it's absolutely important they understand that I can take this that the body can do, twist it this way and that way and create something else that nobody ever did that the body could or should be able to do. So absolutely, I do support it being in the primary school. And like um, Mindy and Joanna would have said, all of us would have been exposed at one point in time to training said teachers. There are primary schools that are attached to my secondary school and the teachers did come to me and say, um, listen, we're struggling with this. How can we get it done? And I took an ethical, um, an ethical decision not to help with that. And the reason is I have been studying dance at Trinidad Dance Theater from as early as my mother could have allowed me to go. Um, um, due to the graciousness of, of both Mr. and Mrs. Joseph, I was allowed to stay there maybe much longer than I should have, <laughs> you understand? But um, I learned so many things there that I would not have been able to learn in school. And I went to a, a, a prestige school that absolutely did not cater to my intelligence. I went to a primary school that did align us with, with um, 
movement and movement trainings. And as a result, I was able to at least develop or identify an intelligence stream. Yeah. So then you, you would say that is at the primary school, if VAPA, suppose all the teachers at primary school supposed to be involved in that. No, 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 no. I, I, I have been studying. That. I have been studying dance and now dance and education since Oyoho. There is no way that a teacher um, at primary school will get a two hour orientation or maybe a two day course in dance and be able to do what I do. What I do is a science. So I so took I an mean, ethical I don't mean decision. To an, I don't mean to reach a professional level. What I mean is that before you enter into teaching the primary level, because uh -huh. it's they, according to Mr. Lindsay, yeah, let me go. At the primary level, it's where dance should be integrated into all subject areas. And therefore, that generalist teachers must have training in dance. So before you are allowed to enter in the primary schools, is it safe to say that all the teachers are supposed to come VAP already? Let me at, ask another question. VAP at, at, Most... at UTT, the Bachelor's in Education. That's what your daughter does, right, Roxanne? Yes. Right. Um, where they teach people to be teachers. They have a dance component. But again, as Kelly was making the point, not enough hours are given for teachers to really become adept in that particular area. So to say that they will be ready to teach dance when they get it's into impossible. primary school, it's it impossible. will still be impossible. So we need and, more. And my suggestion would have been that they should use teachers who may be now in the system or, and, I, I'm, and I'm also saying people who are coming out from our universities here and place them in these primary schools to have that integrated program, put that integrated program in effect where they can use the dance inside of it. You're saying integration, Joanna, but teaching dance as a separate subject in primary school is different, different. to using the dance to bring out or to teach the other mm -hmm. subjects for the children to, to learn concepts and other subjects like social studies and science and stuff. That's mm -hmm. two different things. It's not everybody could do that. Well, that's that what I'm saying. Be, that is why that's I would like not just dance teachers to go in the school, but I'd want the teachers who are teaching the math and the English to be able to use ideas from dance to be able to bring out these concepts for the but children. But most of them aren't willing to do that because they tell themselves, again, they don't have the confidence. A two hour, a two, when they were training these teachers to do this, two hours of dance, two yeah, hours of music, crazy. two hours yeah. of, come on, a half day. How ready were they to really go and implement the program that we have, would have formulated? So the whole revamping of the whole thing, a revamping has to be done. But I know that, that, that um, primary school thing to happen. I know that at um I know that at training colleges and as you said in UTT there is a dance component. My hope is that they teach the teachers or the upcoming teachers how to utilize the aspect yeah. of dance to teach their yeah, subject. Exactly. You know, learn it, teach it from there, teach it to the teachers while they're in training That's college. Exactly. And, 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 and the That's thing is of most the of the times the dance might just be an elective. So it would not be Right. Instead of they're doing dance for everybody, it will just be a superficial thing. Yeah, it's not in depth. So, so how do we, how, uh, be, being dance educators, and we have, we know the problem right now. How do we fix this curriculum? We speak to the curriculum people because, I mean, every time we have in a show here, they must have some resolute. So how do we fix this? This problem? Because, or address, it or address the point, problem. Yeah. Is it a curriculum problem? I think it's education because that directive has to come from the Ministry of Education. I mean, no to even, and even with the well, teacher training, <laughs> there also has to be somebody in, in there who also sees it as integral to the dance pro the, to the program at UTT for teacher training. So Ministry of Education, the people on the board for teaching training at UTT curriculum, all these policy makers or stakeholders need to come together to get this thing working. Well, I do have a question here. 
let's let's say by some miracle because miracles do happen um we wake up in the morning and the ministry of education and curriculum have organized they've gotten it together and huh. they have now said okay come on teachers where are you let me put you into um let me put you where you should be how many of our own already how many do we actually have because we have several vacancies currently we have many schools doing drama and not many schools doing dance and most of and some of the schools or many of the schools that are doing dance are doing it up to a form three level and no further so i don't think that this is a situation where the problem is just the moe or just curriculum i think we need to look at the man in the mirror first and i will come back to what are we doing? How are we affecting change? How are well, we right, forcing the Georgie. hand? Georgie just asked that question. So you're right on par with her. She said, what well, are the was... people on the panel doing to change or make that paradigm shift? And I'm happy that her name came up again because I saw her post something earlier that I wanted to respond to. She had indicated that people are currently making millions of dollars doing online tutoring. And you are correct. However, yeah those persons are working towards their own objectives they aren't tasked with ensuring that the students pass a set outline a set exam so we are we are limited in that we must prepare them for this eventuality where you have the freedom to flex and bend as you need to suit whatever situation presents of course you could make millions of dollars in a in a in a heartbeat but we aren't so lucky pray for us <laughs> well, guys, we want to take a voice note, and you know it's time to wrap up. So we're going yes. to come down to our final questions, final views. Um, let's just take this voice note. I think it's from Mr. Pryor Joseph. Let's see. Good evening, Soka TV, and the panel. Well done. I wish I to log into the discussions. Um, I enjoy it. It's very enlightening. And my humble comment is, um, regardless if you're a dance teacher, dance educator. Or a practitioner, I think some of the things that are vital, and I know it has been said in different ways on the panel, is you must learn your craft, you must constantly upgrade yourself. Yes, um, discipline and also knowing your value. I think those are three things that synonymous with regardless of what area of dance you are in, and this also applies to all elements of the arts, right? Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so keep up the good work, and I. I look forward to further discussion. Um, well, this is Prior Joseph, um, drama teacher and world theater events practitioner. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Prior. And basically, I agree with him that we as educators, um, I guess anybody in any field of education should always keep upgrading themselves. I know some of us during this COVID period would have taken on some online courses. Joanna, Roxanne. <laughs> We would have tried to upgrade. Yes. But we're trying to upgrade our skills. We have to keep up to date yes. and keep up with the times. Especially as we know technology is take is, is taking over. We too had to equip ourselves with the information to be able to teach our children through using technology. So if you know you want so tech savvy, we need it to get on board. We have to uh, keep upgrading ourselves. And well, also to information. Mm -hmm. And yes, and when it's it's creating information. That's the challenge. Creating information that our children will be able to use. Yes. People think it's an easy thing. Trust me, it is not easy. That's what the people think that we are about, dance yeah. teachers and we have all the information there. No, there is no books available for us dance mm -hmm. teachers. We'll have to go here to get some information, go over there to get a little bit of information. There is nothing in one place. So we too have to go in and do research before we bring things to our students. We have to actually go and write up all the, the lessons. We have to write up the notes. It's a lot of work. People think, I mean, I don't want to everybody because I think people are becoming aware, but some people really don't believe that dance or teaching dance is really a profession, profession that needs some, um, that involves theoretical and practical. For me, it's, it's, it is the mother of the arts because it involves so much. Yeah, we have the analytical part well, yes. and then after the, the things that you all spoke about. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, what areas of this current dance education program needs improvement? You could all rush in at once. <laughs> this is with, with respect to our curriculum in the secondary school, at the secondary school secondary level. School, yeah. what, area, uh, what area in this curriculum that needs improvement? You all think needs improvement? 
I'll start from I'll, I'll call him Mr. Um, Mr. Batiz. Um, I would say um, personally technology. Um, because we need the technology, especially in these times, yeah. and a lot of the schools do not have the technology to use. Mr. Oxan? I agree with technology. Okay, well, yes, technology meaning what exactly? What type of equipment are you talking about when you say technology? Internet, as well as um, equipment, as well as... um. TVs, laptops, etc. Okay. Yeah, projectors, all these different things. Yes, Roxanne. Sorry to cut you. Right. So I agree with the technology, and I know also a lot of schools um have problems with issues with space. There's not proper spacing for dance to happen for the teachers to teach effectively because there are some teachers who are still pushing aside their sun chairs to make a small space to have a class and then you cannot be effective in your craft if you don't have the proper space in. So we need to look at creating space in school for dance to happen. Not just creating the space, but having the, pro the proper flooring. Yeah, flooring. yeah that, that's creating mm -hmm. space, right? So we look for a, a, a clear, open um, room, proper flooring, if we can get the mirrors, we can have a washroom access that's easy for the children to tidy themselves after class and things like that. We need to start looking at these things in order to effectively present our craft. We, a lot of us, a lot of us are doing it with with what we have, and I think sometimes that's the problem because we're making it happen with what we have, but it's it's, it's not proper. Joanna? Um, well, apart from infrastructure, I, I was thinking um, we need to formulate some textbook. Right now, we don't have a working textbook in the system for our students. Like all other subject areas, they have their textbook. We don't have a working textbook. So when it comes to instead formulating the book list for our forms one to three, we don't have a textbook to put on that book list. Right. Wow. Mm -hmm. For them to use. Wow. We will quicker use the textbooks as a reference material and to notes. pull from and, of course, give the students support. So infrastructure plus a working textbook that can be used from forms one to three. OK. Kelly, I know you, you, have some, you may have some challenges. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, well, I definitely agree with Joanna where she says that um, we need resource material and resource material for me will extend further. Um, with the CAPE, we are tasked with studying set dances and I will give an example, Sonia Dumas's um, VAPS and we, we were not provided with a copy of VAPS. We were not provided with a synopsis of VAPS. So I am lucky in that I live in Trinidad and I could probably call Sonia and hopefully she will say, well, no problem, look at freebie, take it. But as an artist and a, as a fellow artist, it is unfair of me to ask her to give me that for free because that is her intellectual property. So um, resource materials should also extend into um, copies of whatever you would like us to study. I should have a standardized outline of its history, its costumes, its props, its everything like that. So, well, currently, if you are lucky enough to have Liana as your teacher, you have all the information you need in Belle. And if you are unlucky enough to have me as your teacher, you have to hope that Liana can come up by me a day, else you ain't getting that information. <laughs> you understand? So that is one. The second thing is, I believe that um, we really need to, and I might mash some cones here again, and I cannot apologize for that. I think what we really need to do is um, enforce mandatory training, yearly training, and uh, um, fraternity meetings in the dance teaching industry because we are allowed to be left up to our own devices. Um, simple yearly trainings um, should be attached to our scorecard, what we would call our um, confidentiality. You know, are you hitting um, educational targets? Are your children X percentage able to pass? Because if this year you probably had a 
I want to say bad batch and the children just didn't do well in the exam, no problem, but it can't be that you're there for 10 years and every year you have a bad batch. So maybe we need some sort of training as a fraternity for not just standardization, but continuous education. So for me, that is the short, those are the shortcomings of the syllabus. And well, for CAPE, we need to be able to link it. So it shouldn't just be something in the 1800s and something in the 1700s, but then study choreography done in the, in the um, 2000s. We need to be able to really do proper lesson plans and outlines because there would have been proper thought in the choice of materials that you want the children to study. Right, that's it. Very well, good and depth um, answering there. I mean, the next question leads to Miss Roxanne and the crew. Everybody have to answer this one. Now, before we take, question, before we take this question, let's go to the voice note. Let's take one more. Julia again here. Yes, I think the um, primary school should be doing dance on their syllabus because it would make the students more appreciative and more accepting, I believe, especially for when they have to come over to the secondary school. It would also make it easier for us as well because they would have prior knowledge, maybe of some, some part of dance or some dance experience. Thank you, Julia. Very true. Um, of course, when they come into Form 1, a lot of them are very green, as we say, and um, we have to start from scratch, from scratch. Although the syllabus does facilitate this, it would be nice if they have some prior knowledge. Well, yes? sacred, heart, sacred Heart Girls with, sacred heart girls with um, the Starshell George and they, and Rosemary Boys, and I know a lot of these primary schools are getting a lot of work. It's amazing we don't keep in touch with each other. Dance educators, let me throw a little for Molly questioning. Do you all look back at your children, look look at your the, the um the progress of the children who have left your courses and see what they're doing five years after, four years after? You 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 look at that? Yes. Yes, I do. Yes. And, and what what happens? Oh, well, I hear nothing Miss Kelly say. Miss <laughs> Kelly and answer Miss Kelly. <laughs> so what happens? Um are you um impressed? My with children, your... my children are my crowning jewelry. My very first batch of Cape students, they all made the merit list. All. Nice. And Congratulations. We were, we were, we were, yeah. And this is the regional merit list. They all made the merit list. And they are all, come September here, my final first born will be entering um, the University of the West Indies, all furthering art in some form or the other, and all Thank still you. dancing. Um, my, my second batch, who are what I have now, they are all, um, I want to say continuing in art as well. Three of them have applied to get into the university and I want to thank um, teachers like Mr. Souza who send me their babies and I'm able to beat them into shape even more so that they get into the university. Um, um, so my, my children are my, my crown in jewelry. You know, even the ones that not getting into art, they're getting into fields where the art is definitely going to give them an edge above the rest. I had a conversation with my husband um, earlier today where his, his, um, his colleague, his boss, was telling me that his daughter applied and got through to Oxford University, but only because she was doing music on the outside. So everybody bright, but they wanted to know what does this child have that puts her above the rest? And if she didn't have that applied art, that not just music where she could sing, but tested music on the outside. And she didn't do cape, huh? She's doing tested music on the outside. So it doesn't matter where you want to go or what you want to do. You need to study your craft and recognize the linkages. And I also want to draw attention to, we have the same amount of national scholarships for art, for VAPA, as do most of the other subject areas. And yearly, they usually aren't awarded because they don't really have a lot of candidates. And I tell a lot of my parents that um, if you want your child to get a national scholarship, that's more reason for you to send her for me. Because nationally, if there are 1,000 performing arts candidates or art candidates, be it dance, drama, music, art um, candidates looking for scholarships, it's that one in 1,000 odd is 10,000 million times better than that one in 30 plus thousand for any other subject area. So yeah. it doesn't mean that your child has to study dance, but where will they get their best, um, best shot? 
So I boast about my children all the time. That's they okay. probably hate me, but I love them. They know that I love them. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> so now that is Miss Sipol, Miss Alison Sipol still at curriculum? She's still working there? Yes, she is. Yes, I think she got another one. She got another right. thing, yeah. right? So, um, ladies and gentlemen, you know, Miss Allison C. Paul time is almost up, and you all are there boasting about my children, and you're boasting about what you do with the boys, and you're boasting <laughs> about how you can teach all these things and multiple, in this, multiple <laughs> intelligences and pedagogy, pedagogical training, and all these things. Are you all going to go in and make the difference in that curriculum at the curriculum level? level? Because it's what, what we're talking about here. Why we are speaking here? There is, the a problem right now. there is a problem right now with the curriculum. Can there is a problem right now with the curriculum level? and the way how they treat the dance educators in schools. And I think if curriculum is do a little bit more, then you all would have the resources that you need and all these things because they could speak to Ministry of Education. But Joanna, let me hear you now because you was a prospect. <laughs> um curriculum officers as far as i'm concerned their hands are just as tied as always they can do so much and no more wow That's what so wait you need a books the shop inside of the dance area what how the, i find the pan people has got you easy and ball along the place and you get two million and the calypsonians has Shout and big dancers always so nice. So, so nice. maybe instead of one curriculum officer, they needed two or three inside of there to, for them to make a difference. Because there's a, there has been one curriculum officer for how many years now? Oh, and mm -hmm. I mean, like a voice in the wilderness. But she mm -hmm. is making as much stride as she can with what yes, she has or, or what she's allowed to. I can absolutely agree with that. Alison is in... Um, constant contact making sure that the children that at least for me and this is at all levels everything that i need she is in constant contact asking how she can help if there is something that comes up she will call several of us and ask for feedback so i must say that she does she does make us feel like if she's working and i, I have seen it i've experienced it myself because even when she comes to mark after we are finished marking, we have long conversations about how things are going. Is there anything that I would need her to do to, to help me move forward? Or if we have a problem, even up to this CAPE issue, we have had many conversations around it. So I, I can definitely say that my curriculum officer has been supporting me um, as much as she could, as Joanna has said, because they, they too have hands that are tied. Okay, guys, we want to wrap up now. And um, I want to thank all of you all for coming. And But I have a final question for us to close off because we have spoken about dance in primary schools or the lack thereof. Yeah. We have spoken about all the different um, issues with dance in secondary schools with respect to infrastructure, pedagogy, all these different things. Um, but we want to always take dance to the point where people can make it, as Kelly said, viable, financially viable. We want to... Um, we want to be able to live off dance or make it a career or the other subjects, the other, sorry, the other career areas that we might be able to branch off to. But in order to do that, we want to also encourage our students and, and they to um, improve themselves by going, by taking dance to another level. Kelly mentioned some of our students are going to the tertiary educations. And I want to find out in terms of your intention where would you advise our students to go locally? Because I know they have, they can go outside to many um, dance companies abroad and all of that, <laughs> dance institutions. I see Kelly laughing. But I would want to know, where would you advise your students to go based on their um, intentions, based on their qualifications? Where would you advise them to go? Well, at the universities that we have is UTT. And UE. And before you answer that, remember I went to UTT. Go and ahead. I went to UE. I'm so. going to be a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to be a doctor soon. And we are, we are very grateful for that. So let's go. <laughs> so just in closing, I just want us to advise, you know, the students, the other teachers who may be looking on the general public. Um, you know, where would you advise our students to go? 
You don't have to go too deep into it, but what would you say? Kelly. I'll be on this for the first time, Kelly. Can you talk? All right, Gregor. Um, before I give any sort of advice, I I really question my students. I kind of jam them and what do you want? And if you you cannot reach me, even at a FOMPO level, and tell me, well, I don't know what I want to do, you better start to think about it. Because we are planning your future. And yes, I am that pushy teacher that will call your parent and say, um, you know, Ian don't know what he wanted to what he wanted to do. So how he chooses his subjects, how you let Ian choose his I am that teacher. So after we have had those conversations, then we sit down and we explore what are your options. So for me, it's not as simple as go UTT or go UE. Your best bet might very well be outside. One, one of the things that I force all my upper school students to do is go to international college fairs. The US Embassy brings one, the, the British Embassy brings one, the, um, well, I think they bring one together. And when you go to those college fairs, you, you are able to see what is available that is probably not available here. So for me, it's not as simple as go UE or go UTT, but it is really what does the child need of, of dance? And once we know that, well, then I, I go from there. Them accordingly. Yes. Kelly, you answer the question, you know? Wait for the universities you will send your child to. You would send your child to. You know, if my child, yeah, you make me listen for almost two minutes. I don't know what to say. <laughs> if my child wants to go to UE or university, God bless her. She can go to university. <laughs> 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 I feel we need to put that person in a different context. So, yeah. Um. So okay, my some of my children they would rather go U to T. But I would rather them, if they want to teach, if they want to go into the education system, I would rather them go UE. That's it's my. Based on what they want. Why though? Yeah. Because Lucette, Lucette went to UTT and she's, go, she's a teacher. She also went to UE. Huh? She also, she also went, went to UE. Oh, we forgot that part. Mm -hmm. So you could make them experience it too. Yes. Yeah. So you could send them UTT and then tell them go to UE to do the little course afterwards. I understand. You're brilliant. Well, no, you see, um, no, they one, one, <laughs> one, <laughs> one, yeah, one. You have to make sure if they, depending on what they want to do. Yeah. Um, UE, UE really gives a fuller, um, yeah. a fuller experience. They get education, practicum, theory, the science of it. They get everything. And now UTT's course, as I understand it, is multifaceted. So um, it's more of all of the arts rather than a specialist, um, a specialist area. Yeah. Can you still talking and then tell me which one you send them to? And also, I, uh, Joanna. Well, Kelly and, and Ian answered for me, you know. It's Joanna based on the Kelly and Ian cannot answer for Joanna Francis. If you're making a million dollars, you never child. let them answer for Joanna Charles. <laughs> It's all what the students may want, what their need is. And Where that would you really send the child, Mr. Based on the need. Would you based on the need. Based on the need. If my student wants to be a dancer, a dancer, dancer, performing, I will send them to UTT. If they want to get into the wider range of things with respect to the same outline that, that Kelly just gave, I will send them to you. Okay. Okay. I used to say you for curriculum officer. <laughs> and lastly, to wrap us up, Ms. Robson, this is a Philip. What are your ideas, Mrs.? Okay. Um, well, I share, I share the same views as the panel. And I would say, for example, this year, I have a student that I recommended her to sign up for UTT because of you, the, the change in UTT's um, program even now fits her well because it's now performing and she wants to get into performing. She's doing dance and music for exams, Ooh, right? Okay. I, felt, I felt that UTT's program fitted her, suited her. She, she from ever wants to be a performer. She wants to go out there and act and sing and dance and whatever. So I felt that UTT, UTT's program was better for her. I also have those students who are more looking to go teaching wise and i feel that ue's program suits teaching 
in the school a little more than UTT because I know UTT is now developing that aspect of their program. So I would I have um, recommended some of them for UB. So I support based on what the children want. I go with their needs. If I if I might, Gregor, don't kill me. I would also <laughs> like to tell a lot of the teachers that are listening that some children aren't ready after CXE to move into tertiary education. That level of maturity and that understanding of skills like research, paper writing, all of those additional skills, self-study, self-regulating has not been developed. So two years of CAPE will augur well for those children. So please send them for me. Right, um, yes, plug in, plug in. As well as remember, nowhere, as well as remember, nowhere else will they teach you the business of the arts. I will give you a whole year in that, and when you finish, you get your degree, then you can go post grad and do it in Akem, which is also accepting registration right now in UE. Oh, no, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Kelly, I'm glad that you did say that, you know, because, um, ooh, that you think set me off, girl. <laughs> I'm sorry, Gregor. Because I'm, I'm glad that you did petition for the children to come at your your, your place. Yes, because, um, long it's Dr. absolutely Williams, necessary. Dr. Eric Williams, our first prime minister in Toronto, Tobago, he also said that the two years in that advanced level, they call it at the time, mm -hmm. the two years mm -hmm. of that really propels you to that, place, right. that, yes, that university transition. So I'm glad that you did mention yes. that. And, to bring it back now in 2020, I think that is a great gesture. Yes. Um, all the best. I think this is a very accomplished dance educator. Cater's panel, very, very accomplished. Miss Kelly, Mrs. Mrs. Kelly, sorry, Mrs. Um Philip, Miss Charles, Charles and Mr. Batiste. Very well indeed. I I know that our children's future is in a great in great hands so don't forget to like share and follow oh, the program close, i want to say that education in the art of dance is education of the whole man yes his physical mental and emotional natures are disciplined and nourished simultaneously in dance dance for me is indeed the mother of the art thank you very much panelists Thank you very much, viewers, for sending in your voice notes and all these comments. And yeah, we know we still have comments and so coming in, but it's time to wrap up. And we do thank you for sticking the time out with us and always um, lending your support to Soka TV. Don't forget again to follow, like, like and, and share. share. And one more thing, if you have any questions to put forward on to how to proper National Dance Association, a little okay. further with regards to dance educating, send it through to soka tv and we'll we'll make sure we they get it dancing is creating a sculpture that is visible only for a moment take that philosophy and go forward have a beautiful day everyone our is left bye bye thank, thank you bye. bye thank you thank you thank you very much everyone